September 4th, 2011. Feds allowing trinium radiation catastrophe cover-up. It's a North Anna, Virginia nuclear plant question. And this is from the Intel Hubs website. Nuclear industry watchdogs have warned that the North Anna nuclear power plant may be leaking radioactive trinium due to damage in underground pipes caused by the Virginia quake. And I will throw this in. Dominon, the plant's operator, notified the NRC Friday that its analysis of ground shaking showed the quake could have exceeded its design parameters. An independent analysis by the government also has determined that was likely. On August 24th, a 5.8 earthquake struck Mineral, Virginia, which sent shock waves all over the eastern seaboard, being felt from Colorado to Massachusetts and from South Carolina to Ontario, Canada, after which the media was silent on the fate of the North Anna nuclear plant, which is located at the epicenter of the quake. Now, when the earthquake hit, uh, one of the plant's four diesel generators, which powers the reactor's cooling system during the blackout stopped working as a result of coolant leak, and it caused the massive nuclear storage casks to move. Um, 25 spent fuel storage casks, each weighing one, 115 tons, to move on their concrete pad. And some moved up to supposedly only four and one half inches. It says Dominon Virginia Power has 27 of the massive TN-32 storage casks standing vertically outdoors on the concrete pads. The casts made from thick steel are not fastened to the ground being held in place strictly by gravity. Other damage was concrete bunkers for other used fuel contain containers stored horizontally at the Louisa County Power Station experienced cosmetic damage, she said, but none of these moved. Um, cosmetic damage. The NRC requires nuclear plants assemblies of spent fuel rods to be cooled in water pools for at least five years before being transferred to dry casks. The 27 vertical stored casks are each 16 feet high and 8 feet in diameter. Each has steel walls that are 18 inches thick. So what kind of cosmetic damage was there done to these? Did they rock so much that they were dented? The concrete bunkers that they said had cosmetic damage uh, using 50 ton metal containers that are 16 feet high and 6 feet in diameter are placed in concrete Modules 19 feet high and 10 feet wide and 21 feet long. The modules have three foot thick concrete end walls and each holds a single container. So all we got this going on and the media is remaining silent. The loss of electricity due to the earthquake caused the Fukushima nuclear meltdown which raised fears that the North Anna plant could suffer a similar fate. However, officials quoted the plant owner as saying, the plant was operating normally on backup generators. Granted, there was only three working doing the work of four. We then learned that one of the four generators at the plant failed within minutes of being activated. That was followed by assurance that no radiation was leaked from the plant, even as the plant operator admitted the next day that they were forced to vent steam from the reactor to prevent a Fukushima style hydrogen explosion at the plant. That would only happen if either the core or the spent fuel poles um, had reached boiling point. While officials still asserted the plant was operating safely, it began to question of why the reactors needed to vent steam if the reactor was indeed being properly cooled. The operators then admitted that radiation had in fact been leaked from the plant, but downplayed the leakage by saying the amount was minuscule and that it was in line with normal operations, even though the plant was shut down and was not being run under normal operation procedures. Now, there was a paper presented to Congress um, by scientists saying that there was, in fact, no such thing as any safe levels of radiation. The dam at the nuclear plant was also been classified as highly hazard by engineers and local CBS affiliates in fact found over 20 inches of water had been lost from the dam following the quake complicating matters even further 
is officials gave conflicting statements about what triggered the shutdown at the nuclear plant. Some officials were quoted as saying that the plant was manually shut down, claims which other officials said were untrue, saying instead that the quake triggered an automatic shutdown. Now here is some quotes from the actual workers. Mineral, Virginia. It must be a burst steam in the turbine room. That f thought flitted through the mind of the North Anna Nuclear Power Plant senior operator Jason Russell when the August 23rd earthquake began shaking the facility's control room. Within seconds, indicators show a loss of electricity needed to cool the plant's two reactors. That's when I knew it was something else, said Russell 30, who was supervising Unit 1 when the largest Virginia earthquake in more than a century struck. And here it is. Russell gave the order to manually squelch the reactor. Perform immediate operation E0, he said. As his two charges reached for the switch, a single flip will shut down the reactor. Automatic system raced ahead and dropped control rods into the core, stopping the fusion and reactor. Seconds later, the plant's backup diesel generators kick in, restoring cooling power. So yes, they had to manually flip the switch right there. And he says there was no panic. Russell said during the interview that the facility arranged by the plant's owner, a Dominion, Virginia, we just went through our procedures. Even though there was installation that fell and um, I guess damage to one of the installators on one of the power poles. Now they said they didn't know if the quake shook the facility more than it was designed to handle and we now know that it did. In the control room, a 1970s air seismic detector failed to record data for a critical eight seconds when primary power went down, slowing the company's analysis. The company has added a battery backup to the unit to prevent a reoccurrence. So this is why it didn't automatically shut down was because of loss of power and um, so it took eight seconds before they even flipped the switch. So there's some um, clarification on the conflicting statements about shutting it down. Some officials were quoted as saying that the plant was manually shut down claims which other officials said were untrue. Now we know that they're lying about that, that they did because um, it wasn't operating. They had no power for eight seconds. Adding to the concerns, there are now fears that pipes under the facility may be leaking radioactive tritium into the ground and groundwater. In the past, nuclear plants have gone years and even decades without emitting to tritium radiation leaks. And I guess um, some parts of the West Coast, they have some major problems with tritium in the water. And also, um, I want to say Ohio plant, maybe? We have learned that several critical parts of the North Anna plant were not built to withstand earthquakes. Not at all. We're not built to withstand any earthquakes after Fukushima, but before the recent East Coast earthquake. The NRC began a review of the U.S. nuclear plants and found a few discrepancy at North Anna, including portions of the water and gaseous suppression system and hose stations are not seismically designed. A fire pump storage area is non seismic and seismically designed flood walls are located in a non seismic turbine building. And I also posted emails that was acquired by AP that states um, these plants are actually 24 times higher than previously thought to sustain major core damage in a earthquake and that's being covered up as well according to the emails. Now nuclear industry watchdogs are raising the alarm that the North Anna plant is likely leaking radiation from underground pipes following the earthquake. To make matters worse, even given the known history of the nuclear industry covering up leaks, the government is refusing to do an independent inspection to the plant's pipes. Instead, as the Hook reports, the government will allow the plant operator to do their own inspection. That is not good. 
because they've been lying about that, saying that they're going to have an independent study. And here's an image of that plant. One prominent nuclear watchdog who says it's not what's above ground that gives him the greatest concern. Central to the issue is miles of buried pipes under the plant that can carry radioactive water, says Paul Guttner, director of a nonprofit group called Beyond Nuclear. Guttner cites recent problems with underground pipes at nuclear plants in Illinois and Vermont where millions of gallons of water contaminated with radioactive hydrogen isotopes, tritium, seeped into groundwater even as the power companies that owned the plants denied for years that it was happening. North Anna's two reactors were licensed for commercial operations in 1978 and 1980. At that time, some of the systems weren't required to be designed for earthquake standards. Hall said. So we have spent fuel pools that moved almost five inches. We have the fact that they had a vent radioactive steam. We have a fact that they have cracked pipes leaking radioactive water into the ground and probably groundwater. We have the fact that they had a release. They now admit radioactive steam. Um, they had to manually shut it down because um, of the loss of power and it took eight seconds for them to manually shut it down. So we also have documents that show the earthquake exceeded North Anna's specifications. Here it says, uh, however, one immediate concern focuses on the miles and miles of inaccessible and uninspected buried pipes that carry trinium contaminated radioactive water under the entire reactor complex. While the NRC augmented inspection will look over many of the safety related components of the reactor, the federal agency has turned over all of its inspection and enforcement oversights of these inaccessible pipes carrying cancer causing radioactive trinium to a voluntary initiative run by the nuclear industry itself. Ooh, wow. The question of whether or not this radioactive water is now leaking out of broken buried pipes under the reactor complex into the groundwater around the Lake Anna area is chiefly up to the industry to set to self-report a controversial identified by Beyond Nuclear in its 2010 report which was called leak first fix later. There is also a concern not just for the underground pipes that carry radioactive material as well as underground electrical cables essential for safety and cooling systems. Now, more than likely, they do have leaks because back in November 3rd, 2010, Dominion Virginia Power Company had notified federal authorities about the discovery of low levels radioactive groundwater at the utility's North Anna Nuclear Power Station in Louisa County. Um, back then, a groundwater sampling, um, monitoring sampling point at the plant recorded a level of um, 16,500 uh, pedicules of trinium per liter. Holy cow. So, you know, whatever they had leaking um, from corrosion or whatever, because of this earthquake, I guarantee it's probably completely split open, even worse. Radioactive trinium leaks found at 48 U.S. nuke sites. Radioactive tritium has leaked from three quarters of U.S. commercial nuclear power sites often into groundwater and corroded buried piping associated investigation associated press investigation shows. And this is only because of a whistleblower came out with this information. The NRC did it. A whistleblower did. The number and severity of the leaks has been escalating even as federal regulators extended the license of more and more reactors across the nation. Trinium, which is a radioactive form of hydrogen, has leaked from at least 48 of 65 sites according to U.S. Regulatory Commission records reviewed as part of the AP year-long investigation examination of safety issues at aging nuclear power plants. Leaks from at least 37 of those facilities contain concentrations exceeding the federal drinking water standard, sometimes at hundreds of times the limit. 
Well, most of the leaks, they said, have been found within plant boundaries. Some have migrated off-site, but none is known to have reached public water supplies, at least what they're telling us. This is why I only use distilled water. At three sites, two in Illinois, one in Minnesota, leaks have contaminated drinking wells of nearby homes, the records show. But not, not at the level of violating drinking water standards. Yeah, what about children? What about fetuses developing? At a fourth site in New Jersey, trinium has leaked into the aquifer and a discharge ca canal feeding Pisturus Barngate Bay off the Atlantic Ocean. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Any exposure to radioactivity, no matter how slight, boosts cancer risk. According to the National Academy of Sciences, federal regulators set a limit for how much trinium is allowed in drinking water. So far, the federal and industry officials say tritium leaks pose no health risk. But this is the report I was telling you about that was presented to Congress in 2005 by the National Academy of Science. So, all I have to say is when they tell you that the amount of radiation that you received was like one worth of chest x-rays, how many chest x-rays in a year are we going to get from these nuclear reactors? And what about our children? And if we keep putting up with this and don't do something about these nuclear power plants that are in our backyard, all I have to say is, bah, bah, bah. And this makes me so mad. All right, bookmark my site. I'll keep you up to date. Stay safe and God bless.